Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to share this special message with you. Now, my co-host Michelle and I love masterminds. Not only do we belong to masterminds, but we also host a mastermind. We started it almost eight years ago, and it is the premier mastermind for women business owners who want to grow their business with a specific focus on marketing. Now, this group is usually completely booked out, and very occasionally we open the doors and invite a handful of women in. So if you're growing your business, but you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an amazing time together and the women in the group are extraordinary. They're great cheerleaders, supporters, advisors and colleagues for you. And they're also seeing extraordinary results. We see people cracking the million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar mark, launching new e-commerce sites that go from zero to ten thousand dollars a month in sales. They're doubling their conversion rates, they're growing memberships, they're selling courses, they're growing their personal brands, and they're getting all kinds of media exposure and speaking opportunities and so much more. You can learn more about the Mastermind and join the wait list over at herbusinessmastermind.com. We're going to open the doors soon, so you definitely want to be on the list to get an invitation. So head on over to herbusinessmastermind.com. Create content that attracts, converts, and keeps your ideal clients. This is Content Cells. Hi, you're listening to the Content Cells podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to episode 103. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co host, Michelle Falzon. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hey, Susie, I am great. I am ready and raring to go. Really excited to chat about today's topic. So am I. And today we are talking about online summits. And if you are saying, well, what is an online summit, Susie Michelle? These are, they're online events that involve having multiple experts speaking about a specific topic or theme. And it usually has a host who ties the whole event together and is usually the one interviewing the various speakers. And these online or virtual summits, as they're sometimes called, are typically held over a specific period period of time uh, and you get free access to hear all the speakers and then after that free period, more often than not, there's something you need to pay in order to get ongoing access to those summit interviews. Mm. Yeah, think of it, you know, when you go to a conference or an event, think of it just like that, except instead of actually heading to a convention center and staying in a hotel and then, you know, looking at the itinerary and figuring out which speakers you're going to see in different parts of the convention center over the few days the conference is on, imagine instead that the conference is happening virtually and that you can attend those sessions just by visiting different links, just by clicking into different sections of, um, you know, the online kind of summit environment. It might be on a website. And the great part about online summits is that you can get people coming from all over the place, all over the world mm. and in various time zones. Uh, you can often get a lot more people coming along than, say, a traditional conference because of all that, you know, added hassle of having to travel and get accommodation and all that stuff that goes away. People just have to click a button and instantly access some awesome speakers on a topic that they're really interested in. Mm. And Susie... Before we go too much further, <laughs> I do just want to give you a massive shout out and a massive congratulations for you and the entire Her Business team, the awesome Her Business team, <laughs> for the incredibly amazing, majorly successful Business Growth Summit for Women Entrepreneurs that you just ran. You, we're just fresh off completing that. Uh, and you brought together some amazing, incredible all star. I can't think of enough superlatives <laughs> um, for the lineup. People like Seth Godin, Amy Porterfield, Gretchen Rubin, the wonderful, amazing Robert Cialdini, whose book Influence gets a regular mention on this show, sure was does. also one of the guests. <laughs> Guy Kawasaki, Denise Duffield Thomas, Jonathan Fields, some previous guests from this podcast Victoria LeBalm, Valerie Coos, Jim McLaren, Ryla Beck. Oh my gosh. And the wonderful Susan. Michelle Falzon. She was one of our incredible speakers. <laughs> I'm incredibly honoured to be on it. But wow, you guys just knocked it out of the park. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. We are literally just, as we're recording, it just wrapped up last night. And so we are all on a high um, and it, it just went 
so well. It was just the perfect kind of things for uh, for us to be doing right now in order to reach more people and get into in front of our ideal clients. So much goodness. We're going to tell you all about that in a little while. Mm, oh, my gosh. If you didn't catch that summit, I, you know, it's terrible when people say, oh, it's really terrible that you missed it, you know, but I'm really sorry that you missed out because it was incredible. Susie had over 5,000 women and some men mm-hmm. uh, tuning in and there were um, 16 incredible uh, sessions that you could be part of. And um, I just want to say again, major hat tip to you, Susie, and your team. I know it was something your community absolutely loved. Yes, and they did. (laughs) And it has been such an (laughs) incredible experience. And we are thrilled with the results. Um, And it was a win-win-win on so many levels, not only for our existing um, network members who um, are part of this community, who we were able to feature in various parts of the summit mm. activities and bring her them even closer to what we're doing, uh, including having them on our Facebook Live. So I did a Facebook Live every day during the summit. Uh, they were also, you know, making comments on social media discussions and, of course, enjoying all the great content. In fact, yesterday morning I got a phone um, uh, text from – where else do you text? I got a text on my phone <laughs> um, from one of our members who was binge watching with her son and it was a picture of her and her son sitting on the couch watching Aww. Seth Godin. It was so cute. And and the summit has really got the word out about us. It's a, been a hugely successful lead generator for us, growing our list by thousands and thousands, segmenting most of that list as well and really putting us on the map for many people who, as I said, are our ideal client who may or may not have heard about us before and certainly didn't know that, you know, we could bring to them this incredible sort of information uh, because perhaps they hadn't been tuned into what we'd been doing over the last few years and they're only new in our world. And um, so huge on new clients, big influx of new members um, into our community, all coming off of the back of the summit. Mm. So we will deconstruct some of what you did for the Business Growth Summit in today's episode, Susie, because you did some really awesome things. You just mentioned segmentation there, which again, I think is just, it was so clever the way people coming into your summit um, were segmented. Um, But actually, I really think we need like a four hour episode. (laughs) All the amazing things you did. But what we've done in this episode is really pick some of the highest leverage information that you really need to know if you're listening to this episode and considering perhaps doing a summit in your business. So we've got you covered there. Uh, But first, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the summit, Susie, because I think it will be helpful background info for people who may be listening and perhaps are new to the concept of what a summit is. Uh, And so maybe we can just cover a little bit about what you did and we can get familiar with what this summit concept is in general. And then we can cover some of the key takeaway points we have for everyone. Sounds like a good plan. Awesome. (laughs) So uh, tell us, a bit more about the summit. All the speakers, they were really organised around one central theme, weren't they? Absolutely. And it was so important for us that the theme was relevant to our ideal client. And so our main Mm -hmm. theme was around helping you grow your business. And in fact, we called the summit the Business Growth Summit for Women Entrepreneurs. And our tagline was master the inner and outer game of success for maximum profits and ultimate happiness. So really all the sessions were focused on some key lessons that either helped with that inner game or the outer game and in some cases both. And it was why do we want to master the inner outer game? Well, it's for maximum results in your business and ultimate happiness, meaning a business that is that you're really enjoying. Uh, running mm. now we and that's a message mm. you say a lot you yes know, this, like, it's not, not just being profitable but loving what you do so it's so in line with your brand I love it right yeah thank you so for those of you who haven't heard our her business tagline is do what you love every day so we were able to bring that in in that overall overarching theme now we know who our ideal client is we've done the work that we tell you to do right here in these episodes <laughs> and we talk a lot here on the show and here's another way that being really clear on your avatar really pays dividends. So we really spent a lot of time curating the right guest speakers, people who we knew would have really relevant information to both inspire and inform the women in our community right where they were in their business right now. 
And the feedback we got was really quite incredible with thousands of women tuning in from all over the world and hopping into Facebook over to our page, posting on our page and sharing with their friends, joining us on the Facebook Lives to talk about the sessions. It was really amazing. There was so much, and I know the word engagement Mm. is quite overused, Michelle, but there were so many people who were right in there. They were really engaged. You guys rocked it. On the engagement front, it was so good. Mm, Great. Yeah. So we struck the right note with the right people. At the right mm. time. <laughs> yeah, it really. It did really feel like that. You said that earlier. It really felt like the right thing at the right time uh, on so many levels. I, I loved being a part of it and I also loved tuning into the other speakers. And, you know, my favourite part was seeing mm. all the wonderful Her Business women really being so beautifully featured in the process. So one of my promises when you're part of the Her Business Network is that we will champion you, we will support you in all your goals that you have, but we will also stretch you a little bit. And so we wanted to give the women an opportunity to be really involved with this. And so one of the ways that we did that was that every day we did a Facebook Live, as I mentioned, and every day I had guests. And those guests would talk about the speaker's whose sessions were published just that morning. And so many people jumped in and helped us um, not only, you know, deconstruct that day's sessions, but also helped us, actively helped us reach our goal, which was to have 5,000 people in the summit. And they did this by sharing with their friends and their own communities and colleagues. And one of the things we do, Michelle, is we screenshot, you know, when someone, you know, when we have good news from the community or someone has a win and we have a channel internally where we are screenshotting and we were screenshotting when people were sharing and there were people inside our community who were you know not only just sharing on Facebook but they were sending emails to their clients they were putting it in their Mm. newsletter they were just really going all out because one because it was a good event it was a Mm. good thing to be associated with they knew it would add value to their clients to their colleagues to their best friends Uh, and so I'm just so grateful for the support they showed but here's what I know they would not have shown that if they weren't excited about the being part of the event themselves completely and that's what I love you know you the people that you featured in the Facebook lives were all her business network members that you drew from that community and and invited those guests in and they felt so much a part of it and I know you kind of got them engaged and interested in helping you reach your target too you know like you shared with them your goal of 5,000 women and you said hey I'm at 2,000 help me get to 5,000 and people took up that cause and like you said I loved seeing them sharing in their own newsletters and in their own email marketing. And it, it really is that power of community. Um, it was like all the planets aligned, I felt like, with this summit. And that's the benefit of a great of a great summit. It is something that stands out from the usual. It is something that's got a high perceived value when you do it right. And um, it is something people will go the extra mile for um, to promote for you or to, you know, push aside things in their calendar to clear space to actually watch it or participate. So Mm. um, tell us a little bit about how the Business Growth Summit worked. So I know kind of how it was structured. Um, We decided to have 16 speakers. Now, if you're thinking of doing a summit, here's my recommendation, and this is what uh, one of my mentors recommended, is do not – is keep it tight. You don't need to have 35 um, speakers for it to be more valuable than perhaps 16 speakers. And so we had um, 16 speakers in total. As you said, Michelle, they were very specifically curated to speak to this theme. We promoted for about three weeks before the summit doors were open, teasing that this was coming up and, you know, every little while releasing a little more information about who the speakers would be. And the great thing, um, this is a bit of an aside, is that the speakers were excited about the speakers. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, wow, I'm so excited to be part of a panel that has this person in it or that person in it. Uh, And so they were also really willing participants in sharing and going for the goal. Now, what we did do is we did give some advance notice, like a couple of months notice to our network members, because I always like to keep our closest clients in on, you know, the secrets, (laughs) sort of behind Mm. the scenes of what we're working on. Because when 
and you know this, Michelle, because you've worked very closely with us, is that I like to include my clients because they're part of, because we are co-creating in some way. And um, and I like to take them through the process so that they're not only the recipient of the work that we do, but also are behind the scenes so that they kind of know, well, what, what is Susie doing to put on this summit and how is she thinking about it and how is she choosing her speakers and all those things. So people had to register ahead of time. So you could only access the recordings if you actually registered. So giving you us a name and an email address is all you needed to do. And then we opened up each day. It's a five-day summit we did with three speakers a day, except one day we had four. So we went three speakers, three speakers, three speakers, four speakers, three speakers, right? So that was our 16. And every morning... Mon- Monday to Friday, wasn't it? Uh, yes. And, yes. It on a Monday. Thank you. Yes. Mm. It was a Monday to Friday and every day we would open up a few more speakers. And at 8 a.m. Sydney time, we would um, send an email to say, hey, watch your inbox because these speakers have now uh, gone live. And we would also post that on um, social and then two a two p.m. every day Monday to Friday, I would host a Facebook Live to chat about the sp- three speakers for that day, and that's where I would bring in the members to tell their stories about what they enjoyed. So we followed this process for the five days, and momentum really built up during the week. Sometimes these things can peter off. You have a great first day, but we had also been very strategic about who we released on what day. So we started strong. And we finished strong, but every day was strong. You know, we really mm. curated again which order we were going to release the speakers so that we people had lots of juicy things um, that they could enjoy. And so if you joined on the before day one, then, you know, you were there from the beginning. But if you joined on the Wednesday, so halfway through, you could go back and watch the previous speakers. So we didn't retire them. Some of these online summits I have done, it's like you get a day to do it. But we said, no, you get the whole week to watch, but we're only releasing three a day. And so, yeah, so you had access for the whole week. Mm, it was so great. And, and I did love the way the momentum built. And, you know, by the end, People were sharing with each other their favorite sessions, mm. and somebody would say something about this session, and then they say, "Oh, I'd have to go. I have to go and watch that one now. I didn't realize that was going to be about that." And it was just there was so much cross pollination, and the Facebook lives were great. Oh, great um, and what I liked about that was it really um, inserted you into the conversation too. You know, because um, that was your opportunity to kind of talk about how people could. Um, implement what they were learning or direct people's attention to different things. So I thought that was really clever to kind of keep you and the her business uh, top of mind for people rather than just the speakers. Right. So it was very important for people to know that it was her business that was hosting this and who her business is and what the work we do. But also if, because one of the things I find um, with these sorts of things is that you can get really great information and we had the most incredible speakers and you can leave really inspired, but then what do you do with it? So one of the things that's really important for me is for uh, women to be able to use what they're learning. And so I was kind of their summit mentor. So for the week, I was able to distill some of the key things and help them take at least some action or at least intend to take some action that was actually going to make a difference to their business. Because one of the things that I'm very big on in her business is about seeing our members get results. And I know that what precedes that is actually taking some action. <laughs> and so that mm. was uh, that was really important. And it um, because I had done the interviews and I had the relationships with the speakers and I also had some behind the scenes, you know, because before we start the camp- were rolling, you know, we may have had a conversation or there was something I knew about them. And so I could make it more meaningful for them and their business. Um, having said that, all the questions and the whole thing was also constructed knowing who the ideal client was and really uh, adducing from that speaker the information that was going to be most relevant to women who are growing and scaling a business, which is our audience. Mm. Yeah, it was just incredible value. And I'm, you know, wondering if we can talk a little bit about what the main reason was that you made it free for those five days? That's a good question, you know, because it was an amazing lineup and we could have put a uh, dollar on it for sure and sold places. But we wanted as many people as possible to register and to see it. And my passion and the purpose of her business is to support women from to grow and scale a business. And what I mean by that is to go from being a solopreneur or a very small business, whether it's you and a few staff, to growing a sustainable business that has effective marketing, that has a team, that uses systems well, that uses technology to leverage, that has a vision and a plan, and a business that runs regardless if you are working in it every day or not as the business owner. And so I wanted to get this message across um, to as many people as possible. 
and to show people what they can do to start on this journey of mastering the inner and outer game of growing and scaling a business and what it takes, not only what skills do you need and what information, but what happens on the inside? Who do we have to be? Mm. Because one of our big things at Her Business is that success is not just what you are doing. It's also who you're being. And so it, this, this summit was a lot of work. It was just so many moving parts. And so what we really wanted to do was grow awareness what, about what we do here at Her Business, grow our audience, which we did incredibly uh, through, especially through social media and sharing, and also to grow our email list. Now, we talk about the marketing mountains here on the show and having those uh, really working in our businesses. And we here at Her Business, we've spent the last few years in product development mode, really honing in our amazing mountains in our mountain range from our, you know, really low cost mountains to our, uh, like our membership or to our mid-level mountain, which is called Ideal Business Accelerator, which is a year-long group coaching program, to our mentoring programs or our reach retreat in Hawaii, which we run once a year, and then our biggest mountain, which is our year-long marketing success mastermind, which Michelle and I run together. And all these mountains work beautifully together. And we've built those, we've built the mountain range, right? So we don't need any more mountains. We don't need to create any more new products or services. Now we're focusing on growing the number of people that we ascending to each of those mountains. And in order to do that, we needed to do something big and something different to what we'd been doing before. And so think about it as a giant lead magnet. And we've done a number of episodes uh, around lead magnets. And you can have a neat lead magnet that's a PDF download, and then you can have something really big and complex like a summit. But in essence, that was one of its purposes. It was to be mm. this giant lead magnet. And it was to the effect of 5,000 people. Right. And so you can see there um, that it was a lot of work, but it had a huge amount of outcome for you. And so we've talked, as you said, a lot on the show before about having an effective lead magnet, how important that is for your content strategy. And um, we've got a, a few episodes on creating lead magnets that you might want to check out. And we will put some links mm. to those in the show notes for today. Um, so, but if you're thinking, what are they talking about? What is a lead magnet? Uh, it's essentially something of value that you give to your ideal clients for free in exchange for their contact details and to really open the door on building a relationship with them. And the real key here is to have a marketing system already in place to move those people from just kind of downloading your free thing or hop, hopping into your free summit or, you know, opting in for the free trial or whatever your lead magnet might be to really turn those people into customers. Um, so, Susie, can you talk a little bit about that? What did you have in place to move people from this free you know, from being a free summit participant who perhaps didn't even know of you before that mm. into paid customers of her business. Mm. So as I said earlier, our main goal was to grow our email list and database and awareness of what we do. And we certainly did that. And we went way beyond our goal, which was great. But we also knew that this was a good opportunity to move some of those people into a low cost entry lay, uh, mountain right? And our lowest cost mountain is our monthly Her Business Network membership. So um, for membership, you get all kinds of benefits. You get online monthly roundtable meetings where you network with women from all over the world once a month. You get a book club where four times a year I send you a book. We've got a library that has now over 200 trainings in it. Uh, you know, we promote and market your business for you and loads of networking opportunities and opportunities to create really great relationships and also to get new clients. And that membership is $79 a month. So what we did was we promoted the summit sessions um, as free from the Monday to the Friday. And then what happened on Friday night, if you had already registered, we gave gave you a weekend to do some catching up. But the only people who were going to get ongoing access past that catch up weekend were going to be the Her Business Network members. So this was, this was a great way for us to add value and reward our existing members and encourage others to join if they wanted ongoing access to the summit, but also if they wanted all these other benefits, some of which I just mentioned. And that works really well um, because over the week people got to watch some but not all the sessions and they love them and they got to meet other members in the Facebook Lives and see the quality of women and the businesses that they're running. And by the end of the week, um, a bunch of them wanted to join and keep watching but also keep 
being part of this community and the fun and support that they discovered, you know, in the little taster they had about what we're about. And this has been a really effective new member uh, activities and um, certainly one of the most fun ever <laughs> and one of the most effective. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, again, congratulations, Thanks. really. It was so, so well done. And for everybody that's listening, I really hope you paid a lot of attention to what Susie was just saying there because there was real gold in that. And really, it's really important because this is a big undertaking. This is a lot of work to get put together. There are many, many moving parts, uh, but there is a big upside when you do it right. And One of the keys there was Susie knew the game she was playing from the beginning. She knew that she was bringing people in, giving them a taste of this environment, and really she built the summit to give that taste. And then she knew exactly how she was going to move, you know, a good portion of those people, the ones for whom it was right, to give them an opportunity to move forward and become a customer. So we've put together a few tips, Susie and I, for you if you are thinking about doing a summit. And Susie, do you reckon it's a good time to go into those now? I think it would be great. And bef- and just as we dive into those, I just want to say this is not for everyone. Mm. Um, and it is a really big undertaking. And I really recommend that you um, just just check it out because there's a couple of people who I think, oh, yeah, this is awesome for you, you know, including women in our community who I've made a recommendation to. But we're going to give you the top level things, see what you think, see if it sounds like this is something that you could pull off and feel comfortable about and feel like it would be good for your uh, community. So here we go. The first thing, you will not be surprised. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) The first thing I would highly recommend you do is be really clear about who your summit is for and what it is for. And by that, I mean, Michelle said the words, what game are you playing? Who is it for? Who is the ideal client that this summit is for? And as I said, for us, it was about women entrepreneurs who want to grow and scale a business. Uh, But what is it for? And so we had a very clear focus. So what is it for you? Is it revenue? Are you going to sell places? Is it lead generation? Is it to build a community or to build awareness about who you are? What is it for and who is it for? Mm. Susie, I wanted to just say there too, because we we talk a lot on this show about this idea of no content without conversion. And uh, sometimes people think that just means always getting the sale. Mm. And while we want every single piece of content we're putting out there to move the customer closer to the sale, of course, not every single piece of content is going to result in a sale. It's just going to, you know, right at the beginning of somebody getting to know you, it's going to perhaps result in them opting in. Um, which is what happened when they first joined your summit. Mm. And then when they came to your Facebook Live and they got to see you and they got to see the other women um, or they consumed the content and saw how fabulous or how relevant it was, they started to think, oh, wow, this is really awesome. Maybe I should be thinking about joining this community. And then you finally delivered a piece of content, which was an email or a, a link in a social post that said, hey, the summit's running out. You need to click here to join membership. And so you had you know, several pieces of content through there. But I know your main game was lead generation, right? To get Absolutely. as yep. many people in as possible. Mm. And that in itself was content that had a real conversion goal, even though, you know, even if you'd have got no memberships out of it, right. it would have been a success if you'd have got 5,000 people in profile into into the new business, into the business. And so I just wanted to say this single-mindedness you speak of is so important. And that was your big goal. When, when, whenever you had to make a choice, it was about, well, how do I spend time to get the most number of eyeballs on this, to get the most number of people coming. And then secondary, how do I get as many of those people as possible immediately becoming members? Because, you know, once they're in your universe, Mm. that you're going to move them into membership or other products as you go forward. Right. And you said so much uh, there that um, I really just want people to understand is that we had one goal. The goal was lead generation. Membership was right for some people, and but we didn't make a big hoo-ha. We weren't trying to do two things at once. Um, but we know because we've already created our mountains and we've created the pathways up the mountains. And if this is the first episode of this show you're listening to, you're going to want to go back and listen to what, to find out what I'm talking <laughs> about. But you know what I mean? Because we know our ideal client, because we were segmenting people, because we have the mountains there, it means that it doesn't. nothing has to be sold right now. It can happen down the line. 
because we had one clear focus and that was lead generation in this instance. Um, and once you know who your summit is for and what it's for, then you want to bring that into the naming or the theme. Now, I told you the theme earlier. And so for us, naming and branding the summit so that you're targeting your ideal client is so important. And we went back and forth. We had a couple of different names in the beginning as we were sort of, it was kind of placeholder names, but we dialed it in. And once we dialed it in, it, you know, we were speaking directly to the people that we wanted to raise their hands. Now we were saying women entrepreneurs, some men showed up, good for them. Um, but mm. we were very, we weren't trying to be all things to all people. Mm. The second thing, because we've got a few tips here for you. The second thing, if you're thinking about a summit uh, and, you know, it may not be right for you or it might not be right for you right now but you know i know that we we just we've been discussing summits for quite a while and it's i know it's an idea that's been germinating for you susie for mm. for quite some time um so you might this might episode or this thought might just germinate something in you that takes some time to actually fully fully fledge um but all along the way one of the keys is to build relationships you want to always be connecting because Susie, you brought together this incredible lineup, people like Seth Godin and Amy Porterfield and Gretchen Rubin. You know, these are heavy hitting New York Times bestselling people with global followings. And you were able to do that because over, you know, many years in business, you've just consistently been about connecting and about adding value and about building relationships rather than just being very transactional. Right. And I... I'm not a fan of traditional networking, as Michelle knows very well. And if you're part of our community, <laughs> you know that. I'm, that's just not who I am. But I do believe in being connected with people um, and building long-term relationships. And so I, these were relationships that I had or people connected to relationships that I had, right? So introductions from people that I already knew. And so uh, – I also had to consider this one other thing, Michelle, and that is why would someone want to be part of this summit? Mm. Now, and so were they launching a new book? As a number of them were. You'll notice a lot of them were authors. I love books. I always promote books. These are people whose books I've read in the past and supported in the past. You know, so what is it that they're doing? Are they about to launch a new book? Are they launching a new product or service? Are they doing some profile building? So finding what it is that was going to add the most value to them. Uh, so that was really important. Mm. And, you know, Susie, you've run um, a, a series of interviews with authors for many years. And so they were relationships that you fostered and that you kept alive and you kept those relationships kind of going so that you could go back to some of these people later and say, hey, I'm doing this summit. So if you are thinking at all about a summit, really have your relationships hat on, have that connection hat on. And maybe you already know some experts in your industry. Maybe you're on an association mm -hmm. or you were speaking at an event or you were on a panel where there were other experts. You want to be sowing seeds of connection with those people so that when it comes time for you to think about your summit, they're going to be ready to take your call. They're going to be interested to hear what it is you're doing. You know, maybe you are part of a mastermind group or an industry body. Draw on those people. And like you said, Susie, there was um, a very high profile guest on the summit who you didn't know directly, but you knew you, there was one degree of separation. You were very close to somebody that they were very close to. And uh, so that made that process really easy. Right. And so, yeah, so that was the case. And also, you know, there I had a relationship with publishers that I've kept for years and years. So another guest I'd never met before. I knew her name, hadn't met her before, but I had the relationship with the um, with the publisher and they opened that door. So long-term relationships. Um, mm. The third one here is to start small. And I mentioned earlier we didn't have 25 speakers, we didn't have 20 speakers, we had 16. And so I think the first time out of the gate uh, there is a lot to learn. There's a lot of moving parts. And I know for us it's going to be easier next year because we have worked out so many things, the technology, the marketing, the hooks, the, you know, uh, you know invitation, confirmation, you know, <laughs> communication. Mm, all the logistics. All the logistics, oh yes. <laughs> so keep it small. And, you know, it doesn't even have to be 16. It could be fewer than that. You just want to be able to get your arms around it and do the best job of marketing it so that you can get the people in. And more is not going to give you more people necessarily. Um, and then get practice. So there were so many things about this summit that we had had practice at. So I have been interviewing people for the best part of the last, I don't know, 10, 20 years. Um, I've 
done webinars. I've done big projects with timelines. I'm used to managing multiple things at the same time. Our team has done now a number of promotions that weren't exactly like this, but had a lot of the key elements. We had to bring uh, build landing pages and lead boxes and abandoned cart email sequences and email marketing and website marketing and social media images and then the logistics of, you know, recording the interviews and producing the interviews, and they are beautifully produced, right? We could have just tacked on a, you know, little slide at the beginning and the end, but no, we had to do it the her business way and <laughs> make them really gorgeous. gorgeous, make them really gorgeous. But you don't have to go to that level. But the point I was trying to make here is um, what is your level of mastery? We had level of mastery in a lot of those areas that made it easier for us. But start small. Get practice. If you've not interviewed a lot of people, go interview a bunch of your clients. Get some practice interviewing before you go in for the big guests that you're going to interview. Get some um, training on interviewing. So many things you could do. But start small. Don't, you know, you can always do it again and do it bigger the next time around. The other thing, um, which is point number four here, is about some lead time. So this is not something you can throw together in five minutes. It, it just isn't. Like I said, we didn't start marketing till three weeks before, but we started planning last November. You know, we got some invitations out before Christmas. You know, we had so many things to do in the background before we ever raised our hands and said, hey, you want to come to this thing? It's on. So you want to give yourself some nice long lead time. Now, here on the show, we're always talking about, you know, having a plan for your marketing, right? No ad hoc marketing. So where in your future can you give yourself um, time, weeks, a couple of months at least to gear up to something like this? It's such an important point, Susie, because so many times people just see the front of house. They mm. just see the launch. They just see when the first emails go out. And it's often hard to really comprehend just how far back that person began mm. thinking about that idea or putting some basic plans in place or, you know, locking in the speakers or whatever it is. And I would say, yeah, give yourself at least two months at mm. least two months mm. uh, nice. lead time, even for a simple, small, starting small summit. And ideally, you know, be thinking about it when you're planning out your year. If you if you do your planning at the beginning of the year and you might be thinking, well, look, I'll put this in, in like October. Don't feel like you're going to just start in September thinking about it. Mm. Like in January, start the ball rolling, start getting some time in your schedule in place to really plan for it. And then the fifth step is really kind of following on nicely from that leading, building in the lead time and planning. And that is you want to build your conversion mechanisms in from the start. Well, what, do, what do we mean by that? Well, we talk a lot on the show about beginning with the end in mind, about creating your marketing system so that you don't just go out and generate a bunch of leads and then they go cold because now you think, oh, I've got the leads. Now what am I going to do with them? Mm. You've already spent the time thinking about what you're going to do with them before you get them. And that is absolutely key because people will forget about you. If you don't do a great job right after they've signed up for your free summit or right after they've signed up for your lead magnet, really they're kind of on to the next thing or they're unsubscribing or they're putting you into the spam folder. So build your conversion in from the start. Begin with the end in mind. Know, um, know what it is that you were wanting to offer people at the end of the summit. In Susie's case, it was membership. And while, you know, she was really clear that it's the game she was playing it was about growing her list, uh, she was also able to create this wonderful opportunity to put a significant number of new people into her paid her business network and it wasn't an afterthought it was really begun from the from right at the outset you know including other members in those facebook lives not only was great for the members but it was strong social proof it helped other women watching to see there are some real quality women in this community. Mm. Um, Su Susie positioning herself as the mentor for the process, that was important because um, you got to say in those Facebook Lives and in your emails and in a lot of your intros to the sessions how important implementation mm. is. And there was this great, you know, you kind of kept saying this phrase over and over that it's, you know, great to have the inspiration and the information, but I'm here to follow up and help you with the implementation. I want your business to be a success after the summit. Mm. I'm the person in your corner that's going to be here to help you put the pieces together and to figure out the plan when the summit's over. And that was all really, really important sort of groundwork for when the offer became available to join the membership. So bake in that conversion idea from the start. Mm. 
Awesome. The sixth point here, which we touched on a little earlier, was including your community, you know, bringing your community in from the beginning and, you know, letting them know what you're planning, getting them excited about what you're doing, giving them a sneak peek when you've just landed a new author uh, or a guest, whoever your, you know, whatever your industry is and what it's relevant for you. And then including them, you know, if you're doing Facebook Lives, you know, as I said, what we did is we had them be part of the conversation. Which session did you watch? What did you think about it? Have them share the summit, um, uh, commenting, welcoming people who are joining the summit conversation over on our Facebook page. And Seth Godin has a wonderful line in his book, uh, This Is Marketing. He says, um, community is about people like us do things like this. And so you mm. need to, as a leader, model what that means. So people like us, we're welcoming to new people who join our Facebook page. We comment on and like people who've commented on something that we also watched. So you really, it's really a demonstration of leadership and in really... Uh, championing your community, giving them something great to be a part of, but also inviting them, not passively, but, you know, actively. Like I kept our members up to date on how we were going with our stats. And our original goal, I think, was 1,500. And then when we hit that, we're like, okay, they were like, okay, where are we going next? You know, and they were pushing me to go, okay, what's our next goal? And so include your community. Mm, I would go so far to say, Susie, if you don't have a community, then you might want to think about getting that community a bit more um, – grown through other kinds of lead magnets that don't need a community to really thrive. Like you can build your community up through doing things like PDFs and checklists and free trials and all those things as you grow your community. And then do this is really a lead magnet that that works best, I think, when there is a ready-made group of people mm. there ready to jump on the bandwagon. Because it happens over a period of time. Like yours happened over from a Monday to a Sunday. And what gave it that dynamism, gave it that sort of momentum was this beating heart of the community. Yes, absolutely. Now, so that leads us to number seven. Oh. Is that oh, what we're up to? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I think it is. We kind of touched on number seven, but yes, number seven, off we go. So getting as many people supporting you as you can. And um, summits are really ideal for this because so many it's got such a high perceived value and you've got so many people already taking part so for example you've got your speakers and Susie you mentioned how all the speakers were so excited to be on this fantastic mm. to be included in this fantastic lineup and I know that you gave them resources and you made it easy for them to share the content and to share the links and to make themselves look great like you know beautiful ads with their picture uh, as the big picture and then, you know, smaller pictures of all the fantastic headliners like Seth Godin and Amy Porterfield and so on. And so that really encouraged speaker sharing. But it's also great for getting other um, strategic alliances to support you. So there might be something you're doing as a summit that's really great for your industry and there may be other industry bodies that are prepared to support that. Like I know the Small Business Festival Victoria yes, supported you. absolutely. Mm. And um, you won uh, that wonderful award that we talked about in the last session. And I know the organisation, the Hellenic community that supports you, that award supported you by promoting the summit. Yeah, yeah. And so this is, goes back to relationships, right? Totally. Mm. And so the summit is really ideal, though, for getting a lot of support. And, again, that's where you want the planning in place because you can put these resources together and then get your speakers, get your community, get your alliance partners. Um, it's, it's just an ideal situation because it happens over time and momentum can really build. So get as many people supporting as you can. This is a big thing. You want as many eyeballs on it as possible. Mm. Mm. Yeah, now sometimes I've seen with summits where people and a couple of people asked me, they said, oh, did the speakers get a cut of, you know, whatever it is that you're going to promote later? And I said, no, that's not the way we're, we're doing it. That's not that calibre, you know, the calibre the caliber of speakers weren't interested in a, you know, mm. few dollars commission here or there. It's a different sort of thing. But it's a perfectly viable thing that if you were selling your session recordings that you might set up an arrangement with your partners, uh, with your speakers to, you know, do a profit share. But that's not what we did. Um, I wanted to give you point number eight and point number nine, and I'm going to start with number eight, which makes sense. And that what was a good idea. what a good idea. <laughs> hey, maybe I, I'm going to do them backwards. I'm going to do nine first. Do it. You I'm devil. going to do nine, and then I'll come back to eight. <laughs> so number nine is playing the long game. So here's the thing: whether it's this relationship or any other thing that you're doing. 
if you're seeing this as a quick win, what I would encourage you to do is make sure that you can see um, how this impacts your business in the future. Can this be a signature piece? So we already have speakers who've raised their hand to be part of the 2020 lineup, which I'm thrilled about. Um, And I can see this being an annual thing that we do. Um, And what that means is uh, staying committed to serving as many people as possible because next year I want the 5,000 people who came this year to come back and I want them to tell their friends, right? So what do I need to do between now and then? What do I need to do ongoingly to serve the people who are now part of my world? What do I need to continue to serve the speakers who are so gracious and so generous today? Um, But it's not about a quick win. You know, all the marketing that we teach here on this program that Her Business stands right behind is about playing the long game. What is your strategic objective? What are you trying to do? How did this piece fit into it? Um, That's what I want to say about that. And I'm going to circle back to number eight. And this is something that may not be immediately obvious. And that is the idea of repurposing. And here's what I mean. We have now this body of work that is incredible, that is behind now the walls of being part of the Her Business Network. And our members will get to enjoy that forever in a day. What else can we do with it? There are some three themes that we're running through the summit. Could we create an ebook with some of the best ofs of some of the key takeaways from each of the sessions? Will that give the content a greater life? Yes, it would. Are we going to use them as outtakes for podcasts? Yes, we are. The Her Business podcast, which is coming back online very soon, is going to take some of the audio from those summit sessions and be and repurpose it. You know, again, you know, with, with me at the top and tail, making it relevant for our ideal audience who'll be the listener. So anytime we're creating a body of work, and we've got a specific episode on this that we should link to actually, uh, it's about how do I create something once but give it as much life as possible? Because so much work goes into when we're creating these mm. content assets is that it's a shame for it to sit in inside an mp3 file or inside a webinar file or even on a blog post or anything what if it could exist in multiple media right could we make social media posts with quotes from each of the speakers because everything those speakers said is totally relevant to our ideal client and will be in six months from now and so how do we repurpose what we're doing so there are nine points now the good news is that if you have been in the car or at the gym or haven't been able to take notes we have a freebie a download for you uh, with these nine points and I'll tell you how to get that in just a moment there we have it an insight into the recent her business summit and some key things for you to be thinking about if you are also considering running your own online summit and if you do consider running your own line, on own online summit, um, head on over to the Content Sales podcast page and tell us all about it. Um, so I said we had a freebie. It's called the Successful Online Summit Checklist, and it is a breakdown of those nine areas that Michelle and I just spoke about um, so that you can get off to a really good start with a really good foundation. Oops when you create your online summit. Sorry, there's a phone in this room and it just rang. But we'll keep, we'll we'll move on. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Never heard that before. (laughs) Um, um, We love to share these tips with as many business owners as possible. So we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review on iTunes. If you enjoyed today's episode, we would uh, love it if you would do that. Just head on over to the, your Apple podcasts um, app and, um, Five star, we have loads of five-star reviews. I think we have 69 at last count and we would love yours as well. One of the things we love to do is give a shout out and thanks to podcast reviewers. And today's reviewer is Sonia Filotto of Accelerated Collection Services, who is one of our network members. And she said this, she said, OMG, I have become obsessed with your content sales podcast. I can't stop listening to you girls. So much information, so easy to listen to, entertaining, learning so much from your podcast and you go over and beyond what I expected. What else can I say? I love it in capital letters with 25 exclamation marks. Thank you so much. I'm ever so grateful that I found you girls. Thank you so much, Sonia, for your very, very generous review. Love it. Mm, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Love very, all the exclamation marks. I do too, yes. <laughs> and the heart at the end. Beautiful. Now, tell us what's coming up in episode 104, Michelle. Ooh, we're visiting a little bit of a chestnut, something that we have talked about on the show before, but I just don't think we can talk about it enough. And the landscape is changing. Uh, And we're going to be looking at how you can make more of an impact 
with your email marketing. And that is something we love here at the Content Sales Podcast. It's free. It's effective. Uh, it has been getting a little harder to get into people's inboxes. And mm. uh, so we'll be talking about some strategies to really make more of your impact in the next episode. And I have had a little sneak peek at what is in that episode, and I know you are going to love it. It's a really, really <laughs> practical one. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go today? Congratulations again to you and the Her Business team. Sterling, sterling job on the Business Growth Summit. If you missed it this year, make sure you check it out next year. And if you are thinking about doing a summit, we wish you all the very best with it. And we want to hear. Tell us all about mm. it over on the Facebook group, over on the Facebook page. You will find reference to all the things we talked about here on this episode over at herbusiness.com forward slash summit love herbusiness.com forward slash summit love to get your uh, download and to get uh, links to all the other resources we mentioned here today. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time on the Content Sales Podcast. Bye for now.